Konnichiwa everyone. Today I got a real interesting project that we're going to try. I have not tried this before, but today we're going to make a harashikana. Now a harashikana is, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, basically it is the Japanese version of a scrub plane or a roughing plane. And I have never seen one of these in person, so this is going to be an interesting thing that we're going to try. I've never actually used one either, nor have I held one. I have here a very, very cheap uh, plane. Uh, I've had this one for a while and I actually did a little patch on it before. Typically a tighter mouth on a die is actually a better thing because it lets you take a finer shaving. However, with what we're going for here, uh, we don't want that because we're going to go for the biggest, thickest shaving, thickest shaving possible. And to do that we're actually going to have to open this up a bit. I have a few little pieces of jatoba. This is a Brazilian cherry and it is extremely hard. What we're going to do with that, we're actually going to inlay that into the mouth there to kind of widen that gap a little bit, but also to give that some good bearing surface. And the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to have to get the... Gosh, that is really in there. Come on. Okay, there we go. So before anyone loses their mind, I'm going to explain to you, this is a very cheap blade. This is basically the equivalent of those crappy ones you see on Amazon. What we're going to do to this is pretty basic and pretty simple. We're just going to round the edge, kind of in that sort of shape there. And we're going to do what is the equivalent of the typical scrub planes you see on a lot of the western style. This is going to do the same thing that a western style scrub plane does. It's just going to be kind of a spoon shaped thing bigger mouth. The concept is actually the same, it's just executed a little bit differently. Doesn't make either one better than the other, it just makes them different. Because I enjoy life and I don't like torturing myself, I'm actually going to do the work of grinding this down to the shape that we need with my electric grinder, mostly because I don't feel like sitting here all day doing this. Yeah, I'd get bored of that really, really fast. Like I said before, this is completely new to me. I'm basically working blind on this, but uh, here's to adventure. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of space, not like that, just a nice graceful spoon shape. Hopefully the neighbors won't mind this too much, we'll see, oh, there we go. Course of action with this, we're actually going to use a tungsten bit to get the biggest section of the metal off first, then we're going to downgrade it to a lower grit stone and just polish it off. We're going to have a lot more work to do after this, but this is going to be the biggest part of it. The wise man once told me, work safe enough to be safe and dangerous enough to be adventurous. So besides Japanese tools, I do have this affinity for old school grinders and stuff, especially from this particular company, Do More. If you see this tool available, you should definitely pick it up. Highly recommended. They are pretty rugged and pretty robust. This is actually a tool post grinder that I'm just using as a little hand grinder because, you know, it does say hand grinder on it. Anyway, if you find these, pick them up. They're pretty awesome. Pretty easy to do some maintenance on them. There's hardly anything to go wrong with them. All right, through the power of editing, we have a nice convex. It's pretty accentuated on that. Now, I'm not sure exactly how much it's supposed to be on these kind of things, but I might take these corners down a little bit more here. They are kind of squared off. Now I gotta get this thing sharpened, and I don't have a bench grinder to do this, so this is gonna take a long, long time. But with something like this, the precision really is not, like, <laughs> precision is not something that matters in this case. I think I'm just going to grind it down and try to maintain a decent convex on that. I might just concentrate on making that edge there be the viable portion because I don't know how critical the uh, angle is on this. I'll probably figure it out once we put the metal to the wood. I'm just going to sharpen this thing up, get it ground down, and see what we can get. going to be a long, long day today. So I'm just kind of figuring this out as I go, so if this is not the correct way to do this, please don't kill me. Okay, so after almost three hours of grinding this thing, we've got an edge, and I'm kind of happy with it too. 
fairly consistent across there. It's not razor sharp because we got one important step to do. Now what happens whenever you grind a blade back, and this just happens to every Kana blade after a while, is that you begin to get into the Ura here, which is just the little scallop on the back. And what you have to do to make these work right, you gotta have an edge across there, and you can see I don't have an edge across there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a technique called tapping out. And all that really is, is just taking a hammer like this, and we're gonna tap the blade kind of right in this area. We're gonna use a little bit of a support. You can use wood or an anvil. I've seen a lot of Japanese guys do it on wood, so, you know, it's not really a wrong way to do it. But that's gonna take a while as well. This is a Funate Geno. These are like those boat builders hammers. They work really well for this because you got the little point on the end, so you're not gonna be hammering on a wide area there. I think I tapped this one out before. That's what that little spot there is. Anyway, we're gonna tap this out. And what's going to happen is over time the actual hammer marks are going to disappear as this thing's sharpened back. Then it will be time to tap it out again, but that's just life. Let's give this a shot. I've only done this a couple of times, but the real trick with hit tapping out is to not hit the hardened steel edge up here. You're trying to hit the soft iron, and what that iron will do is it'll push this edge down on the side here, so you'll get a bit of a scallop in the middle. So then when you go to flatten it out going this way, you're actually going to be grinding that metal away and you'll create a new edge. So, let's do it. Alright, keep in mind this is not ideal, but we're going to make it work. I'm very happy with the edge on this. This is the result of several hours worth of grinding, sharpening, and we got a nice edge on the back there, so all is well with this guy. Now we're going to move on to the die. Got a couple of things we're going to do to this, but shouldn't take as long as the blade. So the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to get rid of the pin right here, but I also wanted to point out, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this did have a patch here, so what we're going to do is we are going to remove that patch for the most part. We're going to insert a piece of ingrain jatoba. And the reason I'm doing this is because ingrain tends to wear a lot slower than long grain does. And even with this, I mean, it worked, you know, okay. It wasn't fantastic or anything, but it did get the job done for the time being. But basically, all we're going to go for is something that can take a lot of the hardware, since this is going to be used on really, really rough cross grain wood, you know, for removing like lots and lots of material at a single go. That's kind of the point of this. We're going to dovetail this in, and I've already got a slight, see if you can see that there, slight dovetail, so if you can imagine that going in this way, and sitting right there, and the bearing edge is going to be right on this mouth here. So we're going to cut a little recess in this, get this fit, I'm thinking maybe a half inch down on the sides there, should be good to go. And we'll see what happens. Now the main reason we're getting rid of the pen is because in the book by Odate, he actually specifies that these do not use chip breakers, so there is no need for a pen if there is no chip breaker present. Just a couple of taps from a local encouragement device, and we should, ah, should be good to go. That is in there. There we go. Alright, the most nerve-wracking part. Here's to adventure, right? Alright, you can see we got a nice recess cut there. I'm going to try a little test fit. It's really just a matter of, oh, cut upside down. It's really just a matter of making sure that everything fits as it should. You can see we got that held in there without any glue or anything, so pretty tight. Let's give a little taps here and see what we get. It's a little off still, so got a little bit more work to do. Let's just keep going. All right, so a lot of fitting later. Let's see what kind of fit we got. Oh, yeah. 
this is tight enough that we don't even have to use some clamps. I'm going to get some glue spread around in there. Now for this application I'm using tight bond because this is going to be a pretty hard wearing piece. Now fish glue is fine, as is hide glue, and I really like both of those, but I will say the tight bond has its place. Now if this went according to plan, which it looks like it did. Alright, not bad. Not bad at all. I'm going to stick a little bit more glue down in there just to make sure I've got good coverage, but we're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back to it and see what we got. So not too bad. That turned out pretty good. I am going to have to bring this sole down a little bit to kind of take up some of the slack there, but Luckily I got the tools to do it. Got to bring the back down here. This wood has moved a little bit since I last touched it. So I'm just going to go over here with a little plane and, uh, you know, just keep going until we get it right. All right, so hours and hours and a few more hours of work later, this thing is done and I am very happy with it. I'm kind of disappointed too because one of the things that I had wanted to show was how I flattened the sole of this. Basically, all I did was I took some adhesive sandpaper, put it on a flat surface, and then you draw the plane across the sandpaper basically the same way you would draw it on a pole cat. But what I also did was I noticed that the finish on this was basically really, really, really smooth, and it was so smooth you couldn't get a good grip. Because this is going to be used for rough stuff, I decided to remove all that overly smoothed wood and kind of rough it up a bit so that you can get a good solid grip. Again, this is not a super valuable plane. It doesn't have any long provenance to it, but you know, it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna add some finish to it. Not, not really finished, more like that butcher block conditioner stuff. And then it should be pretty much done. And we're gonna do one last thing on here is I'm gonna add the relief cuts. I'm actually kind of planed it down a little bit right there. And all the relief cuts for this one are is just one point here and one point right here at the mouth. The back on this is completely relieved, just like a smoothing plane is. So I'm gonna get the hollows made here, and then we're gonna try this guy out. Pretty excited, guys. So one more thing I did for this is I also slightly rounded over the sole there. So instead of being flat, it sort of follows the convex of the blade. That just makes it a little bit easier to tune, so you're not having to tune the entirety of the sole here. You're just having to tune that middle section where the blade makes contact. And so we got a good bit of blade showing there. Let's see how this thing does. It's just a regular old 2x6. Let's see what kind of wood we can mulch here. Wow, that's some, uh, that is some thick shavings there. certainly pleased with how that turned out. That was a successful experiment, I think to say the least. Should do someone a very nice service. If you're not into Japanese planes, this is a great way to get into one. Something like this that doesn't require a whole lot of tuning, nor does it require a whole lot of fine finesse stuff. You can just kind of go at it and hog off however much material you want. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and big thank you especially to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are awesome. I could not do this stuff without you. If you're interested in that kind of thing, there is a link to the Patreon page in the description box down below. As always, thank you guys for watching. Have an awesome day. Arigatou gozaimasu. Sayonara.